This is a short quick bite tutorial for CS 491, 591 computational immunology. I'm going to show you how to compile and run the SimCove simulation. So the first thing we're going to do is um, SSH into the Wheeler cluster. And then you're going to CD into your SimCove directory. This is either a directory that you've cloned using Git or you're provided with a zip file that you've untarred or unzipped. Um, make sure that there are files in your UPC XXUtils directory. This is a submodule, so it's easy to forget to clone it. Um, but as long as there are files in there, you should be able to compile the code. You've been provided with two scripts, um, a Wheeler Simcove underscore run dot PBS for running Simcove on Wheeler, and a Xena um, batch script for running Simcove on the Xena cluster. Um, the Xena cluster has been provided for when Simcove becomes GPU accelerated. Hopefully that'll happen in the near future um, because Xena is uh, a GPU cluster. Please don't run the unaccelerated version of Simcove on Xena. It's better that you run it on the Wheeler cluster. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take a look at that Wheeler PBS script because it helpfully loads the modules that you will need to compile the code as well as to run it. So the first thing we're going to do is load this module. This just provides um, a C compiler. The next module provides UPC XX libraries. The way that Simcove is written um, it's parallelized across as many nodes and cores as you like. And the programming paradigm is that um, UPCXX sort of fakes having shared memory. So even though it's running on different computers, when um, you write to a shared variable, there's communication that happens that updates all the other nodes to let them know that that shared virtual memory location has changed and that they can get the updated value. It makes it very, very easy to program. It's a little bit slower than other methods, but it makes it really easy to share data. Next, we're going to load CMake. CMake um, configures the make files that we use to build Simcove's binaries. The next step we need, and this is only for compilation, we don't need this to run um, Simcove, is we need to tell it, we need to tell UPC XX what kind of network we're using. We're not using Ethernet, we're using InfiniBand. InfiniBand is generally faster than Ethernet. So we need to specify that by saying UPC XX underscore network equals IBV. All right. Now there is a helpful build script that will run CMake and then run make on um, the output of CMake. The first thing I want to do is clean any previous leftover binaries. And then we can run build release. All right, so CMake finished configuring and now um, make is building the binaries uh, using those make files. As soon as this is finished, we will submit, well, first we'll modify the, um, the Wheeler script you were given, and then we'll submit it to the scheduler. The only modification we're really gonna make is to update the email address that's in the script so that you get notifications when your job starts, if it fails, and when it finishes. The build was successful. Let's take a look at that PBS script. You can see that I've set PBS-M and my email address, of course, you'll set it to your email address, and this way you'll get notifications. Um, hopefully you're familiar with PBS scripts, but if not, these PBS directives talk to the scheduler and set things like how much wall time you want, in this case, one hour, how many nodes you're gonna use and how many cores per node, so a total of 16 in this case. And here it's set to use the default queue. We're going to change that in a second just for debugging purposes. 
everything below the um, hash PBS lines are going to be the commands you're going to run. So first, when this script is running on the compute nodes, it's going to load these modules. It's going to change to the directory where the script was submitted from. And then here's the upcxx run that will organize um, running Simcove on as many cores as you selected. All right, let's go ahead and save that. And I'm going to say qsub um, wheeler simcove run.pbs. Now that will, by default, um, execute on the default queue because that's what was specified inside the script. But I can overwrite that by on the command line saying dash q debug and submitting it that way. And now I can do qstat dash u user to see the job running. And you can see that it's running here. Um, there's a previous version of Simcove I was running. And now it's running on the debug queue. If I like, I can put watch in front of that. And now it'll update in real time um, the status of the job. So it's running right now. As I said before, I've got another Simcove test running as well. All right, so that shall take a few hours to run, um, depending on how many nodes you allocate and how many CPUs you allocate. And as soon as it's finished, it'll email me to say that it's done, and I can go and check the output, download that to my machine with PowerView installed, and uh, simulate the output, or visualize the output. By the way, if you are running Ubuntu, you can install um, PowerView locally with sudo apt Install our review. I already have it installed. And to run the scripts that are um, in Abby's tutorial, you can install Python 3. And that'll give you access to play Python. Sorry, PV Python, which is needed by the scripts that you'll be using to visualize the output of, um, of Simcove. All right, so that's about it for this tutorial. Um, as a reminder, please don't run the non-GPU accelerated version on Xena, but you can use um, up to 400 cores if you're able to find um, space for that on Wheeler. Uh, to process your Simcove simulations. All right, goodbye.